In today's video, the goal is fat loss, to go from looking like this to looking like this. Is it better to restrict our carbohydrates, restrict our fats, and by how much? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video comes to you from my Instagram. So if you guys would like, go to my Instagram direct message. Now I am a coach, I coach competitors, who want to lose body fat. I coach lifestyle people who want to lose body fat. My job over the last decade has been to perfect the art of losing body fat, keeping it off, reaching our goal physique, adding muscle, keeping muscle, whatever it may be, all around the specific approach of an individual, right? Because we all have different parameters that we must adhere to to reach our goals. And today's question comes from right here on my Instagram direct message. So I want to discuss this question as specifically as I can and help you guys reach your goals. Quick two questions. To lower body fat, I need to eat less carbs or fat? Two, if I drop some pounds, do I need to readjust my daily intake calories? Well, thank you for the great question. And if you guys have an interest in following along this type of advice and following along me, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It really makes my day. And I love giving you guys free solutions and tools. And I'm going to give you some great tools to reach your goals here. Now, the question is a great one because there is a lot of information around low carb diets, low fat diets. There's even a lot of research around low carb diets, low fat diets that will explain why one may be a better approach than another. And I'm gonna give you my two cents because as someone who has, in my mind, worked very hard to perfect this idea of fat loss, my goals as a coach is not just to help people lose body fat, but to help people lose body fat in a manner that makes the fat loss sustainable, while also changing their bodies for the better, preserving it. Because any idiot can do a starvation diet, right? And lose a lot of body fat. And I've seen it happen many times, but what typically happens is the body fat comes back because you don't actually learn the tools necessary to get the body fat off the right way, and thus, you don't learn how to keep it off. The process of losing body fat is not just about actually the physical activity of having a caloric deficit, which is required to do a fat loss. It's also what happens up here, guys, okay? Fat storage and fat loss, a lot of it is psychological, and I think that's something that it took me a few years to understand. A lot of people look at food as good and bad. I promise you, if you have a binary vision of food, if you put foods over here and label them good, and foods over here and label them bad, and every time you try to lose weight, you put all these foods in this binary thinking, you say, well, I'm just gonna eat my good foods to reach my goals. Well, what's gonna happen is, even if you do reach your goals, as soon as you start eating something that's on the bad plan, you're gonna say screw it and you're gonna be bad for a while. Instead, what I recommend is taking an approach of accountability of all foods, anything that you enjoy. You can eat any manner of diet that allows you to reach your fat loss goals, any foods that you enjoy, as long as they fit within your daily caloric needs. Now, when restricting fats and carbohydrates, it's important to understand what your day is like. If you are a highly active individual, somebody who is on their feet all day, very busy, and you try to restrict carbohydrates too low, you're going to risk low energy, brain fog, and likely relapses in overeating because you're going to have low blood sugar throughout the day. However, if you learn to manage your carbohydrate intake, manage your fat intake, you can keep them both in a moderate place. Now, when it comes to caloric restriction, First things first, make sure you're taking in enough protein throughout the day. The ideal amount of protein that I would suggest is around the goal body weight that you have. That's right. Whatever weight you want to be, if you're eating around that in grams of protein per, per day, for example, my goal weight might be 200 pounds. If I'm eating around 180 to 220 grams of protein per day, that is plenty for me for my goals. It's also going to help with satiety. Okay. So where should these ranges fall for fats? The basement I find for fats is around 25%. Now, if you're going to get to extreme conditioning levels, maybe down to 20% of your total daily calories. The biggest variable there is going to be carbohydrates. So why can't we do very low fat diets? Because the fats that we ingest, they're responsible for our body's production of hormones. Some minerals and vitamins are only fat soluble, meaning if you don't take in enough fats, your digestion will not be good. Fats are also responsible for some of the other things in our body, some of the other things like hair, teeth, nails. So you don't really want to restrict fats to a point where you're causing yourself detrimental health issues, okay? So what does that number look like in a daily total? For someone like myself, I rarely go below 50 grams of fat in a day. I find that if I do, 
I start to notice it and have some issues, okay? Now, as a male, that's going to mean low testosterone production, something we don't want. And especially myself as a natural bodybuilder, I'm not injecting or taking exogenous hormones, so I need to make sure my body is producing things optimally. Now, when it comes to carbohydrate intake, that's where we're going to have the biggest variation because if you are a highly active individual, let's say you're going into the gym and training four or five days a week, plus you have a, a job where you're on your feet throughout the day, Carbohydrates are our body's preferred energy source, okay? It is readily available. It reduces our hunger immediately upon consuming. And so what's happened over the last few years is that there has been this claim that the insulin is the issue with fat gain and fat storage, but I'm here to tell you that is not the case, okay? Our bodies can store body fat in the absence of insulin. That's right. When you consume fat, your body can convert that directly to adipose tissue without insulin. So stop worrying about insulin because all insulin does is shuttle the energy in our bodies to where it needs to go. Okay. So for those of us that consume carbohydrates, yes, you might get an insulin spike post consumption. It shortly comes back down. And what does that insulin do? It moves those carbohydrates where? Or muscles. So stop fearing insulin guys. What really drives fat storage is the overconsumption of calories. So if you are being accountable and you have an idea where that lies, then you are not going to be at risk for storing body fat. You're asking great questions, so I'm sure you're off to a great start. But if you need more help, we do offer a free health calculator that gives you an idea of how many calories you should be taking in based on your goals, your weight, and it even offers you an idea on a meal plan macro setup, all free of charge if you go to ProPhysique.com and check out the calculator there. That'll give you the idea. But as an athlete, and as a coach, what I prefer to do is basically make small adjustments to carbohydrates over the course of a fat loss period. Okay, so someone like myself, I'm typically between three to 500 grams of carbohydrates a day when I'm in my maintenance phase. I'll drop my carbohydrates down to two, 250 grams per day when I'm in a fat loss phase with also adding in single days of refeeds. Now, carbohydrates are stored intramuscularly. So when you consume a lot of carbohydrates and you are doing some type of resistance training or exercise, those carbohydrates are going to be stored in your muscles for energy for the next time you train and exercise. So for this reason, I like to make sure that I am in a good position to have great performance. If you notice that your performance is getting worse and you're trying to stick to a low carb diet, now I would consider anything under 25% of your total calories to be low carb. Uh, very low carb would be under 10% of your calories, and then you're probably getting under 50 grams per day. Then you're going to risk being in ketosis. Now, a ketogenic diet is a very specific approach to dieting. It's become very popular over the last couple of years because of its uh, touted health benefits, but I'm telling you, I have not seen people be able to stick to a ketogenic diet. That's right, because it is mostly fat. Often 70 to 80% of your calories are coming from fat. And the research that I've seen shows that although there is a great loss of initial weight, most of that weight is going to be fat-free mass, not fat mass, okay? So you're going to lose a lot of fluids in the form of carbohydrates stored in your muscles, so your performance can be degraded. Now, if you have to do ketogenic diet for a health issue, that's a completely different thing here. But those of us that exist in a world where we want to be able to eat some carbohydrates and understand that balance, there's no reason why we can't have carbohydrates and lose body fat, okay? In fact, I think that is the preferred method for those of us that are performance athletes, physique athletes, or are concerned with keeping muscle throughout a fat loss journey, along with living a normal balanced life. Carbohydrates are a part of our daily life. There is a misconception that carbohydrates must be removed to lose body fat. That is completely incorrect. If you hear anybody say that when you do exercise, you're just burning carbohydrates. That's false. Exercise actually burns a fuel source based on the intensity of the exercise. The lower the intensity of the exercise, the higher percentage of fuel comes from our fat or our adipose tissue. So something like low intensity steady state cardio is almost completely fat burning versus something like high intensity cardio, which is going to be burning mostly carbohydrates because it's the fuel source most readily available if you think of it from a perspective of we have to perform. Ultimately though, both of those activities, low intensity, high intensity, non-exercise activity, uh, resistance training, whatever it is you're dur doing during the day, you are burning calories doing that activity and thus you're creating an energy deficit. At the end of the day, the 24 hour window we have created, are we in an energy deficit at the beginning and the end. That's gonna determine fat loss, okay? So I suggest 
finding an approach where you feel comfortable. You feel good throughout the day, you have good energy. Multiple meals per day, I prefer three to four meals per day, any more than that, and it becomes a bit too cumbersome for me to try to eat every three or four hours. There's also no benefit to metabolism, and there can be a detriment to muscle protein synthesis if you're not spacing out large doses of protein throughout the day. So should you restrict fats? Yes. Should you restrict carbohydrates? Yes. You should restrict them in a manner that allows you to reach your goals somewhere around the range of, say, 40 to 45 percent protein, 25 percent, say, fat, right, guys? And then we're going to have the rest of that be carbohydrates. And that carbohydrate base is going to allow us to perform. Now, if you are very sedentary, it might be more important to reduce carbohydrates. Why? Because you're not going to be using them. If you're sitting at a desk all day, carbohydrates are not going to be as beneficial for someone that is active. But if you're watching this channel, if you're watching my videos, you guys know I'm a competitive natural bodybuilder. I coach bodybuilders. So I prefer to keep carbohydrates as high as possible when in a fat loss phase. I will also spike carbohydrates multiple times throughout the week when body fat gets lower. The leaner the individual, the more times I will have them boost their carbohydrates to ensure that their performance is good in the gym. Next question was, after you drop some weight, do you need to adjust your calories according to that? Well, what's gonna happen is, as you go through a dieting phase, you are going to adapt, meaning you're gonna restrict some calories, you're gonna maybe add some cardio, you're going to create a deficit, you're going to lose some weight. Once you stop losing weight, that means your body has adapted to that level. So to keep weight loss going, that's right, you have to ensure that you're in a deficit through either adding more activity or taking away more calories, however you choose to do that. But yes, you are going to have to do that along the way. I will say this, the deficit that you create to lose fat is not what you need to be at to maintain that, okay? I typically find you can add two, three, sometimes even 400 more calories than you're using to lose body fat per day to maintain. Likewise, you can reduce the amount of cardio you're doing to lose fat and still maintain it. I've noticed with my athletes and with myself, it is oftentimes difficult to get body fat off. It is not difficult to keep it off if you avoid rapid body fat regain, which can be a problem depending on the approach you take. The more rapid you lose body fat, the more likely you are to gain it quickly. The longer you take to lose body fat, and this is very clear, the more likely you are to maintain it because you are taking the lessons you've learned and applying them to your daily life. Remember, fat loss is not just about what you eat. It's not just about what you do in a day. It's also about what's going on in your head. The psychology of fat loss can be very difficult, and some people associate it with a very short, intense bout of exercise or low calories to reach their goal weight. They go to their wedding, they go on vacation, and then they, boom, they put it back on. Now, I understand why this is attractive, to people because they feel like, okay, I can do anything for 30, 60 days, right? But understanding that you may be setting yourself up for more failure by taking this approach. Instead, losing one to 2% of your body weight per week over the course of months is going to allow you to sustain it, to stay at a body composition that you're very excited about. And I plan to show you guys this year, I've actually been dieting down. Um, I was 213 pounds today. I started this journey at 230 pounds. I'm about to do a video probably tomorrow. I've been doing abs for 30 days. If you guys watched my video where I walked every day for 60 minutes for 30 straight days and lost some weight there, that might show you just what it takes. But fat loss has to be a campaign against yourself. You didn't put 30, 40, 50 pounds of body fat on rapidly. It accumulates over a lifetime, right? So if you want to take it off, do not try to take a rapid approach. Instead, use a balanced approach, right? Don't restrict fats super low. Don't restrict carbs super low. Find a balanced approach, find some accountability, and just be consistent. Find ways to move more, find ways to eat better, and allow the body fat to get to a place where you're happy. If you guys have any other questions, be sure to go to my Instagram direct message, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.